Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And before we get into today's video, we've got a fantastic announcement about the latest online Yellow Belt course that we've just released. If you go below this video, you will see the link that will take you straight to that Yellow Belt course. And it will also give you access to a 24 hour limited discount offer on the price of this course. This material contains all the techniques that I use 90% of the time with my clients. If you want to start to become a world class technical problem solver, this isn't just a certificate, this is world class skills buried in this course, then this is the course for you. We are delivering some of the best skills online anywhere in the world. Click on the link, get the best yellow belt course you'll ever see right now. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to take a look at, well, we're going to answer a question that somebody sent me on an email about designing an experiment. So if you want to send me questions like this, I'm more than happy to answer them in videos. It helps your learning and it helps other people's learning as well. So this is one that we're going to answer for a viewer. And they've sent me a question about a seven factor. So they've got a seven factor problem and they want to know about designing a DOE. What experiment would I, rec would I recommend? Now what I first recommended very quickly to them, personally, I would go for a Taguchi L12. But then the question came back, yes, but that's too level. And I think my system responds in a curved manner, which of course would require us to add a third level to our DOE. All right, so the Taguchi L12 would be my first uh, port of call. Um, if you really think it's three level, and because we've only got seven factors, the next one, so this would be option one for me, Option two is the Taguchi L18. Now the L18 is going to test in three places, so you're going to you're going to check for curvature in this particular DOE. Uh, so you can have seven factors, and they would be at three levels, and one factor is actually at two levels. So the first column just asks you to go high and low. But if you don't have this, just ignore that column and use the other seven columns. Okay, so they would be my two, they would be my two ports of call. Now, the next question was about though, I won't be able to see interactions what risk am I taking? What's the problem with doing this? Now, what you have to realize is these DOEs are the first step of a, a journey, effectively, that you're going on to explore knowledge about your process. So these two DOEs are what I would call screening DOEs. We are going to screen. So in other words, these are the first experiments you do when you admit, I don't know how my system works. I need system knowledge. So what's the first thing you want to do? What these two are doing is to say, which one of these seven factors really makes a difference? Which one of these seven factors really drives a signal through this system. 
And that's all we're really trying to do with these two experiments. We're just trying to see the big hitters. Then the next experiment you're going to do is a modeling experiment to understand how to hit the target. So normally you, you screen first. What does screening do? It finds the big signals. Obviously only main effects big signals. So you screen first and then you follow it up with a modeling DOE using those few signals, using those few levers. And usually what we're trying to do is we're trying to go from six factors and above for screening and we're trying to get to five factors and below to be able to model okay so normally this is the first of potentially two experiments that you're going to do so when you ask the question, the, the other question you've asked then is, I won't be able to see interactions. And you're dead right, okay? So you're dead right about the problem of seeing um, interactions. Neither of these is going to show you that. Here's the advice I'm gonna give you though. And this, is, this comes from experience as much from uh, you know, it being a DOE or any kind of statistical knowledge. If you're dealing with physics, it is very rare that you would get an AB interaction. So the AB interaction is influential, in which case A and B will probably also be influential. Okay, so that's point number one. Physics says that if you've got an A-B interaction, these two will pop up in the screening DOE as being influential, okay? Let's say that's not the case. Let's say I'm, I'm wrong about physics. Maybe it's in chemistry, but let's say I'm wrong about physics. What's the risk, okay? Now here's the point. When you drop factors, because obviously you're going to say, well, out of my seven, let's say only three of them are, are of interest to me. Only three of them generated a nice big signal that is of interest to me to conduct my second experiment. But maybe those three factors miss an influential two-way. So obviously what you've done, you've got seven factors. So let's just put them down, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Is that right? Seven, yes. Okay. So let's say you've done the, you've done the experiment and the experiment tells you factor A, factor C, and factor G are the influential ones that you're gonna go and do some more work on. But what they missed is an influential EF interaction. What's the risk? Well, here's the point about experiments. So one of the things about doing DOEs, it isn't just that you have to learn how to use the orthogonal array. You have to learn how to behave around a process. And this is a crucial piece of behavior you are about to learn about a process. We are going to drop four factors out of our next experiment, okay? So we are about to wipe out those four there because they weren't influential. What's the risk? Well, there is no risk really because what are you going to do to them You are going to fix them, and I'm going to use this word so that it is clear and unambiguous. You are going to fix them somewhere forever. 
So once you've got a model that contains these three, the model is a design space. So you're testing this box here. That box is fixed in space somewhere in your process. And it's fixed in space by where you put B, D, E, and F. And obviously you're trying to hit a target somewhere inside that box. Okay, so maybe you're trying to hit that target there. And that's where it sits in the box in space. If I allow somebody to come and fiddle around with these four variables, what happens next? This box moves in space somewhere else. And this model that you've just created here is completely useless. This is fundamental when you're doing experiments. This is fundamental to process knowledge. It's fundamental to manufacturing. When you say you are fixing B, D, E and F, you are fixing them forever, providing your model is useful to you. You have to agree to just fix them. And if you can literally pull the dial off the front of the thing, all the better. Because then you know they're definitely not going to move. So if they don't move, the interaction is not going to do anything, is it? Because it's not being switched on and off and manipulated. So what's the risk? The, the, the ultimate risk is maybe EF would have helped you hit the target cheaper. That, that, that is a possible risk. Maybe EF, um, maybe it would have helped you to hit the target uh, faster, faster setting on the machine or something. So there's a bit of knowledge that's gone missing. You didn't get the full benefit from it, but should the interaction hurt you because you didn't take it forward and utilize it? No, you, you're gonna fix these variables. That interaction is never gonna operate. Therefore, if it never moves, it can't hurt you. Okay, so I think that should answer your question. So you're either gonna go L12 or L18. By the way, the risk on the L12, of course, if you've genuinely got three factors, sometimes the, the, the model says, the analysis says, oh, factor A, factor B, they don't do much. And of course, had you tested in the middle, you might have seen a big, a big signal which is curved. So of course, this is picked up by the L18. The L18 will see the blue model. The L12 will only see the red model. So that is the risk. But when it's your first DOE, you're trying to learn, you have to accept that sometimes the DOE doesn't go. It doesn't, it doesn't answer your problem. The, the DOE doesn't always answer your problem. What it always does is give you knowledge. So if you've got this issue here, what you'd very quickly learn is you don't have a two level situation, you have a three level situation. The DOE's taught me something. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to teach you things. It's not supposed to deliver the perfect answer. If it was there to deliver the perfect answer, you'd already understand how your system worked and you wouldn't do the DOE. The DOE is to teach you something you, you didn't know. And therefore, when you're making these decisions, sometimes you make mistakes. That's okay. There's your DOE process. Screening first, modeling second. Interactions won't hurt you if you miss them because you fix the variables that you let go. You have to fix your variables. Otherwise, knowledge just falls to pieces. This knowledge that you've gained in this blue box here falls to pieces unless you fix variables. Learn to use DOE, learn to fix variables, and you'll learn to make more money. Hope that answers your question.